Okay, so in this lesson I'm going to, to talk about the internet scalability and actually the intermediate routing problem. Uh, so I'm going to explain how actually interdomain routing works, which is basically through a protocol which is called Border Gateway Protocol, BGP, and which are the issues uh, with respect to the scalability of BGP and issues that we have today on the internet. So uh, before getting into this, um, I would like to explain a little bit, uh, very, very briefly, what actually is a router. I think that this is important to understand why we're having issues on, on the internet with BGP. So, um, well, what is a router? Uh, a router is a computer, it's a machine that forwards packets, uh, typically IP packets. And how does it work? Well, it receives an IP packet on one interface, it looks up on a table uh, where it has information about how it has to forward this packet, for instance. In this case, if it receives one packet addressed towards 10.0.0.0.8, it should forward the packet through interface 1. Okay, as you can imagine, typically routers, they have many, many, many entries on that table. Okay, so again, uh, receive the packet, check the destination IP address against this table, and decides which is the output interface, and sends the packet through the output interface. Now, how fast it has to perform this operation? Okay, so if you assume a TCP acknowledge packet, which is around 44 bytes, and you assume a 10 gigabit per, per second link, which is pretty common in, today, in today's networks, you have to do this in 35 nanoseconds, which means that in 35 nanoseconds you have to look at this table and forward the packet through the appropriate interface. Why you have to operate that fast? Well, because at the end, if you, are, if you have a 10 gigabit per second link, you will going to receive each 35 nanosecond one packet, assuming that all of them they are as small as TCP acknowledgement. You have to be prepared for the worst case, of course. So you have to forward a packet each 35 nanoseconds. So you have to perform all these operations in less than or 35 nanoseconds. Just to give you an idea of an order of, of how small or how large this number is, uh, in a uh, one gigahertz processor, one cycle takes just one nanosecond. And in a DDR3 memory, accessing one word takes 32 nanoseconds. Of course, routers, they are not built using these memories. But this gives you an idea of how small this number is and how fast you have to operate. So as a summary, building routers is pretty challenging. And actually, the IP lookup is one of the biggest challenges because it has to be very, very fast. And the larger is the lookup table, the slower is the lookup. This is a common trend in computer science. Of course, there are many, many ways to, to avoid this issue. But let's say it's, it's, it's a quite common trend. OK, so getting back into interdomain. So now I'm going to explain a little bit how BGP works. So uh, what, what is interdomain routing? OK, so interdomain routing is the routing uh, protocol, which is typically implemented always implemented with Border Gateway Protocol, with BGP, that allows you to route packets interdomain. Okay, so uh, we have to define what a domain is. Typically, a domain is called as an autonomous system. An autonomous system is a network which is typically managed by one single uh, entity, so an ISP or a national research network or a large company, they are an autonomous system, and they have a set of IP, IP prefixes. For instance, uh, a company may have um, one, IP, one slash IP prefix, which identifies the nodes which are connected to that autonomous system. And what actually does, uh, what is the, the role of BGP, which is the function of BGP? Provide routing between ASs. So the main role of BGP is to actually enable routing among ASs, which is actually interdomain. Okay? So how does it work? So let's say that we have this very simple topology. We have uh, several AS, ASs, which actually uh, are connected this way. So AS3 is connected to AS1 and AS4. Okay. Uh, and now, uh, how does AS5, how, if I send a packet from AS6, how, which is the path that we actually follow towards AS5, and how do I learn this path? Okay. So this is how, how it works. So um, in this case, AS3, it will announce that it is connected to AS6. Okay, so what it is telling to AS1 and AS4 is, okay, I am a neighbor of AS6. So if you need to send packets to AS6, you can send them through me. Okay, um, so this is typically it's a BGP update message. 
Okay, now what happens with AS4 whenever uh, or with AS1 when they receive this message? What, what should they do with this message? Okay, how do you actually further propagate the bounds? So there are two main, main common policies um, to do so. Um, BGP works based on destination addresses. Okay, so they, they will, it will only forward packets based on the destination addresses. Um, and uh, there are two common policies to propagate uh, this information. The first one is customer provider peering. This is typically a relationship where, where a company buys internet connectivity from another company, and this company they are typically called internet service provider. For instance, this is ho somehow the relationship that you have with your ISP at home. Now, uh, there is another relationship which, which is called shared cost peering, which is among entities that they typically provide internet connectivity and they want to exchange information. For instance, two ASP may, may want to have a peering relationship among them to exchange packets because they consider that this is beneficiary economically. Okay? So, as I was saying, typically uh, customer provider relationships are paid relationships because they provide internet connectivity. So, this is more or less a relationship, uh, the, the foot of chain, how it works. And uh, this is how packets should, should uh, flow. Okay? Uh, and this is, they, they are uh, shared cost peering relationships, so typically among providers, that they may decide to, to create a link among them to exchange traffic. And typically, this link is not paid. So, because the cost is shared among them. Okay? So, um, this is how packets then flow. They flow upwards on the topology and they can follow shared cost peering links. Okay, this is how uh, routing works. So, uh, let's go again uh, with the, with the same topology. Now, recall that we have divided the links between customer provider and shared cost link. So, in blue it's shared cost, in green it's customer provider. Now, the rule in BGP, and this is quite simple, is that you never announce routing information uh, that you learn on a, peering, on a peering link upstream. So, if you learn a route, if you learn a route on a peering link, you don't announce it uh, on a uh, customer provider link. Okay? So, um, how it works is that AS4 will learn that it can reach AS6 through AS3, but it will not further propagate the information. At the same time, AS1 will learn that it can reach AS3, AS6, excuse me, through AS3, and it will propagate the information through. Downstream, okay, you cannot do that upstream, but you can do, you can do this downstream and through uh, peering links. Okay, so now, now AS2 knows that in order to reach AS6, it has to go to AS1, and then AS1 can go uh, through, a, a, it will go through AS3 and AS6. Okay, so that's the path. And they always prepend the AS number to the path, so that this is actually the, the path that it has to follow. See, AS. Uh, AS3, you have to go to AS1 and then to AS3. Okay, AS2 will further propagate the information. So now AS, AS5 knows how to reach AS6. Okay, and those, this is what is called AS path. Now, uh, let's say that AS4, they want to go to AS6. And as you can see, there are two paths that it has learned. It can go through AS1, AS3, and AS6, or it can go to a more direct route, which is AS3, AS6. Okay, so they, they have two AS paths to reach AS6. So how do they solve this tie? Okay, so um, this is the BGP decision process. And it's a little bit more complex. Here we have simplified it a little bit, but I think that you can get an idea of how it works. Um, first of all, you, you select prefer routes, uh, which are manually configured. So because of many, many reasons, AS4, typically economical reasons, may decide to send traffic through here, although the route is, is longer, instead of through AS3, because of whatever economical reasons. So, first of all, you choose the preferred route. If there is no preferred route, because this has not been manually configured, then you choose the selected, the shortest AS path. So, you choose the fastest, let's say, or what you expect that will be the fastest path, which is, in this case, this one, through AS3. And in case of a tie, there are certain, you have other tie-breaking rules that can uh, address this issue. So, um, where do you actually store all this information? So, routers, actually, what they store is those AS path. Okay, so in this table that I have shown here, 
Okay? They store this, uh, all this information. And actually they have two tables, not just one, but two. You have the PGP routing information base, which um, is, this is stored in memory, in let's say low latent, uh, excuse me, high latency memory, so chip memory, and you store all the information that you have learned from BGP. Then what you do with this information is you compress it and you uh, run the, the BGP decision process on the, on the RIP and you compress all the information and you create the feed, which is actually a table that you use two for one. This one is safe in data plane memory, which is very, very fast memory and very expensive. So again, the larger the table, it's not true that the larger the table, the, more, the slower is the IP lookup process, but what it is true is that actually the larger the table, the more expensive the router is. So the, the smaller the table, the better for everyone. Okay, so. Um, now, for the remaining slides, I'm not going to explain them in detail, and you can follow them, I think that they are self-contained. Um, what you will learn in these slides is that uh, there are many other situations. For instance, an AES may want to be multi hall which means that they have two upstream providers. This is very common because um, you, if there is a failure, you can use another one, or because of economical reasons. So you will learn that this actually creates more entries on this uh, read table. Um, then you will learn also how to choose. There are BGP techniques to choose how you want traffic to ingress your network because you may want that certain um, traffic goes through this link and other traffic goes through this link. This may, might be important for uh, because you have a, a, a critical application that you want the best connectivity and you want to use this link and for the rest of the traffic you, you may want to use this link. So you will learn here how BGP works in these cases. Okay, and finally, in the last um, set of slides, you will learn why is this an issue. And um, what you will see is that actually, this is the growth of the size of RIP tables in, on the internet. So, these this are the years, and this is the size of uh, the PCP tables on routers, which now is around 400,000 entries. Okay, so it's a very large um, table. And this is the result of the internet becoming larger and multi homing practices. Okay, so um, since we have to store 400,000 entries in a very expensive memory, making routers is becoming very, very expensive and actually quite complicated. So that's why uh, we need a solution for this. Okay, um, so uh, this, this issue is, is what we call the interdomain uh, routing scalability problem and it is uh, uh, forcing us to try to find different solutions for this, trying to find different architectures. There are mainly two, two different approaches to solve this. The first one is clean state solution, which is rethink everything, let's start from scratch, let's throw, uh, throw away what we have today in the internet and let's try to create something new and that works better. And there are evolutionary solutions, which they say, okay, let's try to have what we have today and build something on top of that without uh, throwing away anything and trying to fix these issues. 